Hi guys, and welcome back to our FIFA 22 Sunderland Road to Glory career mode. So, in this episode, we are going to be making moves in the transfer market. Well, I say moves, I mean move. We'll be making one singular move. And I'll tell you why. I was going to get two just sort of half-decent central midfielders, but literally, just before I booted up the game, FIFA got an update. EA have updated the game, and finally... The uh, glitch has been sorted where the, the youth players, they actually have numbers. We'll have a look now. The likes of Guerrero. I think Guerrero actually had his number anyway. But Jacobs, he has a number now, as you can see. Borges, he has a number now, as you can see. They're stuck to 23 for some reason. But I think that's because they're out on loan. But if we have a look at uh, Castro here, he finally has his number six. He finally has his number six. So uh, we will be using him, which is really, really good. But, of course, the situation was... Both Caballos and Gonzalez are missing the remainder of the season. So all we have really as viable options are Castro, Gavi, Torres. That is all we have in the centre of midfield. Now, you guys have given me a few options. Let me just quickly go through them with you. So we have Curtis Jones, we have Elmas, we have Rakic, or Ratchic, I'm not too sure, I'll say Rakic, or Renato Sanchez. It was also suggested uh, to buy Jordan Henderson, but just like Jordan Pickford, for some reason it says that Jordan Henderson has a grudge against us. So we can't be doing that. Uh, because it's just broken. But uh, Curtis Jones, unfortunately, he probably would have been a bit too much, but he's also just gone to uh, Sheffield United as well, so we can't get him. He's only just moved there. We have Elmas, who we might have a look at very, very shortly. Rakic, for me, it would have been ideal, because usually in my central midfield uh, partnerships, I like a big, strong, sort of um, bullying midfielder who wins everything, cleans everything up a bit more defensive. Then alongside that more defensive midfielder, I like to have someone who breaks forward a bit more technically gifted. But this season, my mind has changed on that because we've had the likes of Caballos and uh, Torres as well next to him. So it's two attack-minded midfielders and that's why we're scoring so many goals. But we might be a little bit leaky at the back because they're quite soft in the middle. But I just love how attacking we are when we break forward and we get so many bodies in numbers as well. So I'm going to leave Rakic because, firstly, we can't afford him <laughs> although it would have been ideal I won't lie to you I have actually tried and tested to see if we could get him even if we threw someone like Josh Madger in and they're not interested so there's no way we could get that to work and Sanchez as well look at that 86 rated there's no way we can get him as well um, even if we did sell players we don't really have anyone to sell who would bring up that kind of money so I am going to go for this man here Elmas from Napoli there number seven I've seen bits and pieces of him in real life and he's actually a really exciting player, really technically gifted, likes to get forward. A little bit of tenacity in there as well, a little bit aggressive. He's not the, you know, the strongest lad in the world, but he's really aggressive. He likes to break forward, he gets goals and assists. So, very, very similar to Caballos, actually. So, a great replacement. So, we are going to go in for Elgif Elmas. And they have agreed on a 31.6 million fee. I have just been going back and forwards for ages. I started off with 25 million, they went 39, and then we ended up meeting somewhere along the middle. 31.6 million for Elmas, I think it'd be a really, really good addition as well. Six foot, so it's not too small. And um, you know, it's always nice to have the sort of small magicians on the pitch. But when you've got them dead in the centre, six foot is kind of the minimum for me. Although you know, kind of contradict myself there, because I'm pretty sure Torres isn't six foot. But we'll see what we can do. Can we get this one over the line? He wants 55k a week. We'll take that. We'll accept it. And there we go. We have our new creative midfielder. I hope to God that no one else gets injured because we're genuinely screwed at that point. We're going to be screwed. But there he is. Elmas, 82 rated. The same rating as a um, as Caballos, actually. So it really is a like for like. So we've absolutely smashed it. And what a lovely suggestion that was from you guys in the comments. He'll be wearing the number 17 for the remainder of the season. As you can see there, 25 years of age from North Macedonia, 82 rated. He has that something special, but we'll have a look at his, uh, his development. We'll have a look at his stats and statistics. He's got a little bit of pace on him. His agility, 84. Reactions, 82. His general passing ability is very good. He's got that bit of aggression, like I say, 77 there. Vision, 82. Ball control, 85. Long pass, 82. Look at that long shot, though. That is what I'm most excited about. 88 long shots. You know we're going to get some there. 89 dribbling ability. The ideal replacement. Even, maybe even better than Caballos. It's a shame that he didn't have a player face. But other than that, that is an absolutely perfect and ideal replacement. But now moving on to the episode, we will be playing at probably the first half of January. We have Chelsea. We have uh, Burnley in the league. We also have the semi-final of the Carabao Cup. And we have been drawn against... Brighton, so we could have been drawing it a lot worse because if we have a look at the draw and the teams that are still left in the competition, we could have been drawn against Chelsea, which would not have been nice at all. So you could arguably say that that was the best draw we could have possibly 
hope for. And then we'll end the episode by probably quick in the game against Pompey in the FA Cup. And for the first game in this episode, we will unfortunately be going with our second string squad against a really, really strong Chelsea side because the other first team are absolutely exhausted. So this is the lineup we're going with. It's 4-4-2, which is the formation I use in the second string squad. We've got Hoffman, Guerrero, Doyle, Sanderson. We've got Finlay, Castileo, Castro. We'll give Elmas his debut because he is fully fit. We'll stick him in the middle alongside Castro. We have Johnson, Brendan Johnson on the left-hand side with Scarlett and Madra up top. Will this be enough to... Get three points away from home at Stamford Bridge. Let's get into it. And here we are. It is absolutely pouring it down at Stamford Bridge. We currently have a little bit of a lead at the top of the Premier League. So we do have a little bit of leeway in terms of dropping the opponent here and there. But I'd love to absolutely blitz the league at this point. We've got ourselves into a brilliant position. We don't want to take our foot off the gas now. And Chelsea will be kicking us off. How are the lads? Get away, get away, get away. That's yours. Well in. Brennan Johnson. With his defensive duties there. Should we just try and send Madger on, Mom? Oh my god, he's gonna get there, he's gonna get there. Go on, Madger. Big touch son. Keep going. Still Madger on the counter attack. Madger, surely. Get in on the first counter attack. It's the first attack of the game. And it's Josh Madger, who I did actually try and get rid of in a player exchange. But thank god he stayed. Because he's put us in the lead at Stamford Bridge. Look at the touch. Bullet one and again. And he drives it past the keeper. Really poor goalkeeping, really, to let him get past there. I thought the keeper should have done a lot better. He dives really, really late. But it's 1-0. Come on. Oh, now it is a good chance for Chelsea. That first real chance of the game. And it's a great challenge there from Dion Sanderson, who we haven't seen too much of. That's Billy Quetta now, the experienced head. We do get a touch in it, though. Can we break? As we do love to. This is what I mean. Get so many bodies forward. Is Guerrero. He's not the quickest. But I can see movement there. Get inside. It is Elmas. He does have the long shots on him. Oh, and it was nearly... The perfect start for his Sunderland career for Elmas. Oh no, they're breaking from the corner now. Guerrero, who doesn't have that much pace, trying to keep up with Romelu Lukaku. Hold him up. Hold him up. He's dinked it back a bit unnecessarily there. That's what I mean with the AI sometimes. It's really confusing decisions, but it is. As Billy Quetta, oh, I've dived in too early there. Getting to him well in, Castro. I'm so glad we can use him now. Ball over the top. Go on, Finlay. Get there first, Sonny. Can't. Good chance. Go over to him. Great block. Defending so well, considering this is the second string. And there goes the half-time whistle. And we've played really, really well. They're trying to really force Romelu Lukaku down the centre. But we're dealing with everything they're throwing at us. We've a couple of counter-attacks. One of them in which we scored. And we nearly, or should have, maybe had a second as well. Hopefully, we improve in the second half and get that second. Hold on to the ball really, really well. Spreading the plays as with Quetta. See what I mean? They knock it around really well, but we're holding our shape. Not allowing them any space in saying that. They've got some space now, aren't they? Let's mount again. What are they doing here? Come on. Don't let them get to Lukaku. Don't let them get to Lukaku. They're sliding it up on the edge of the box. And it's a great save from the half. Oh, no. Don't let them twist. Don't let them turn. Don't let them turn. No, 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 no. What a save again from Hoffman. Jesus Christ. So well and good as playing some decent football, but we haven't had a, an end product in this second half. And now it is Sane, Finley trying to keep up with him on this side here. Go on, don't let him get the ball in the box. Don't let him get the ball in the box. Go on, Finley. Go on. Oh, it's been done there. Far too easily. There's space in here. Get it away, get it away, get it away. Lukaku falling over himself. They're refusing to shoot. He has done now, and it's a save, thank God. Come on, lads. We just can't break down this Chelsea defence in the second half. But there we go. A really, really hard-fought win. I don't know how many highlights they're going to be for that second half. The first half, we controlled the game, made a good few chances. That second, we couldn't create anything. We played some good football, but nothing was coming of it. And it's finished 1-0. Get in! And as you can see, with that win, we are seven points ahead of Arsenal, who are currently in second. Chelsea in third and Leicester in there as well, in fourth the, the game in handover, some of the teams as well on 20 games just like us but now we are going to be taking on Burnley we'll do a quick sim game for this one, we're actually going to go with second string for this one as well, and we win by two goals to one, hopefully there's no injuries, there isn't, but it's Gavi and Skull who get themselves amongst the goals, but now we are going to be heading into the first leg of the Carabao Cup semi-final at the Amex against Brighton and this should be really exciting because this is our strongest starting 11, it's the first time that Elmer will be starting within the first team so this should be really really good hopefully a brilliant performance to set us off for the second leg let's get into it and here we are at the MX 
Hopefully we can get a good start to this semi-final. Of course, we did win the Carabao Cup last season. Can we do it again? That would be absolutely brilliant if we could. We're still in every competition we've been in so far this season. We're flying in the Premier League at the halfway stage. We're currently in the semi-final of the Carabao Cup. We're still in the Champions League. Of course, we've been drawn against Bayern Munich. And we will be starting our FA Cup run in the next game, which will probably be a quick sim one, but still against Pompey. And away we go. Come on. Let's batter him. Well in, Windle, so, so good. Diaku inside to Elmas now, driving forward, it is Elmas, still Elmas, keeps going, spread the play, lovely stuff there by Elmas, and now it is Williams, there's bodies in the box, going to get there first, surely, oh, it's swerved, no one could get there, it looked destined for Diaku at the back post. Good chance for them now, go on, oh no, it's a goal, 1-0 to Brighton, they've been probing they've been pushing and they get their just rewards lovely football there tried to slide in just as he was about to pull the trigger didn't work we'll go down in the first leg come on get your in it get your in it williams head in oh it's in the bar oh it's cleared away only for a diaku he strikes it that's blocked come on man it is captain twantaby he hits it from distance and it's a save come on good chance now for Brighton, they've been really, really good in this game. Maybe I was a little bit too big for my boots before we started. I thought we'd be able to run away with this. But they're playing brilliant, better than Chelsea, in fact, in the previous game. The tempo of their movement is just crazy at times. We just can't get anywhere near him. Come on, just intercept the ball. Can't get anywhere near them at all. Good chance for them now. Loads of space. And it's, oh my God. 2-0. Oh my god, they move it far too quickly, I can't do anything. I'm going to change player, they've already moved the ball on, so it looks like I'm just walking about aimlessly. 2-0 to Brighton, thoroughly deserved. It's just shocking, look, by the time I've changed the player I want, they've already moved the ball on. And it's an emphatic finish, it really is. 2-0. Go on, get there first, get there first. Too weak, and again, oh, we're not winning anything at the moment. It's all Brighton, is this going to be three? I think it is, it is! I can't believe it! Brighton have absolutely destroyed us 3-0. <laughs> I can't. I don't have an excuse. I can't believe it. I really can't. Our first team have been absolutely annihilated by Brighton. 3-0. Help him out. Torres now flick it on to Grant. And again, lovely stuff. Out wide. Really, really good football. Let's try and find Grant if you can. Surely get in. 3-1. Beautiful football. That is more like it. Get in. Really is really, really good football. It's the first time we've had a bit of tempo to our game. We've been a little bit too laid back. But that's a lethal finish from close range from Colin Grant. You expect no less. Come on. Elmas now from distance. On to Torres. Can he go for goal? He does. It's gone in. It's absolutely gone in. It's 3-2. What the hell is this keeper doing? Oh my goodness. Get in. We're talking about Elmas with the high rating for long shots. But what the hell is the keeper doing there? What the hell was that? But we'll take it 3-2, right on the stroke of full-time. And there goes the full-time whistle, to be fair. I'm really, really happy that there's only a goal difference between the sides because they absolutely destroyed us. Only last sort of 20, 25 minutes of the game did we look interested. But luckily, we go into the second leg, only a goal behind. But now we are going to be rounding off the episode with a quick sim game against Pompey. We'll use our second string squad for this one. It will be nice to progress in the FA Cup because we haven't done too much in the FA Cup in this series. But will this be the start of a journey to Wembley? Yes, it will. It's a 2-1 win. It's Magic and Scarlet, the, uh, the duo up top for our second string. Absolutely flying there, 2-1. But that will be the end of the episode, guys. We're currently on 50 points in the league. I didn't realise how far we were drifting away. Nine points ahead at the top of the league. We have Liverpool in second, City in third, Arsenal in fourth and Chelsea in fifth. Now the bottom, we have Fulham, we have Leeds and we have Blackburn. Blackburn still only one win from their 21 games played, sitting on nine points, but it looks like they're going to be falling away unless they start to butt their ideas up really, really soon. But that'll be it, guys. If you have enjoyed, please hit the like button for me. That'd be massively, massively appreciated. And subscribe to the channel if you're not already to become a fully-fledged member of the Sony Army. But for now, you take care and stay jammy.